Hey there, 351. Hello, hello. <laughs> hey there, 351. Hello, hello. Didn't realize I had a volume on. I'm trying to run live stream on my iPad because my cell phone doesn't charge properly. <laughs> so it's an interesting little setup I got going on, but I figured I'd give it a go. I haven't been live in a long time. The sun's about to come out. Woohoo! I started quite some time ago, actually, and it was raining, and I was headed out to a location that uh, was suggested to me but it was on this um, 14 mile long back country back road which was all washed out in many places the ruts were deep i actually had to lock in my my four-wheel drive and uh, i decided i was about seven miles from the actual location and i bailed out i said nah if i get stuck down here <laughs> nobody's it would be expensive to get me out is what i was thinking to be honest Thank you. I'm glad to be out too. It's been, it's, I mean, I went my, uh, the last day off or the day before, no, I guess my last day off, I went out for a little bit, but I had to run around looking for spots to, to go fishing. And um, same, I guess, was pretty much true for today. Uh, Cause as I said, I was headed out way out in the back country. It was about an hour and a half ride from my house. And uh, it didn't, that didn't pan out that, that, spot was actually i'm gonna say down the road from where i'm at now but like i said it was probably a 14 mile back road country road eddie gross hello uh so yeah i'm like you know i i can i can lock in all four wheels and whatnot but it was just sketchy that it was clay and slippery and all the last thing i needed was to slide right into one of the deep trenches and be stuck way the heck out there so i bailed out seven miles in and i had already done probably 12 miles of that road like that so um that was it i bailed out and decided to turn around and come back down the road to where i'm at right now <laughs> lamar hello thank you very much for popping in Safety first, for sure. Absolutely. I mean, it, I, it's not even that as much as I was fearing for safety, but I was just concerned about getting my, my uh, SUV stuck out there. And not only that, I didn't even know if I would have signal. I'm surprised to have a signal out here. I'd be stuck out there with no signal, <laughs> stuck in a rut. <laughs> Snake River, hello, hello. I knew you weren't on my I'm on your way. <laughs> you never know. You just never know. No, I don't think I have Lamar. Um, I live closer to Myrtle Beach, and um, so. It's really difficult to find spots to fish that aren't overloaded with boat traffic. Uh, you know, good, nice fishing water to be on. It's not necessarily a back channel. You'd like to be on the main river, but it's just been more and more complicated. And the uh, location I used to fish quite a bit where I was going live, maybe not last year, the year before, I was going live all the time in the bank of um, Yohanna, which is the great PD River. And um, that one now is just so overgrown. You can't get on it. I actually stopped there the other day. And it's even on the other side, it was just too, the water, the current was really humming. And this one's flowing pretty good too. Uh, but yeah, it's worth the trip. I'll have to check that out. Is it an actual landing? Um, or do you just look up the watery dam?
No, I'm actually you're saying that. I'm kind of wondering if uh, one of the the people I know that probably fishes out that way, uh, if that maybe is where he fishes. Carolina Cat Daddy. I think he fishes out that way. I could be wrong. How's my... Um, I, I don't know if, if the iPad actually connected to my earpiece or not. Hopefully my voice is coming in clear, not muffled. A fishing pier. Okay. Huh. Yeah, I might have to look that up. I mean, like I said, I, I was willing to go an hour and a half out of my way to this remote, as I was told it was, a remote spot. I'd say it was pretty dang remote. However, I did see three or four vehicles pass me, which I was surprised considering the condition of the roads. I mean, to me, that was that was where you'd want to take your four-wheeler <laughs> and go down those. And I, I, I wasn't about it. I'm like, you know what? I've had, I'm not even going to go the seven miles more of that. I turned around. Uh, a fishing trips, you know, traveling, that's a, a great question. I mean, how far would any one of you travel to go fishing, really? You know, and, and it is a good question. Like, an hour and a half, I guess, doesn't seem so bad. But you don't know the water. You know, you're not really sure what you're getting into, and you're driving an hour and a half. So, um, I don't know. But is fishing really worth that trip? Anything I lied. I absolutely did lie. I didn't think I was going to go live, and I, here I am. I'm, I'm, I can't... I thought I was going to be way out in the back country. Um, I am in the back country, but I was going to be way down in a remote area. I didn't think I'd have service at, and um, that didn't pan out because it was four-wheeler country, back road, deep ruts, washed out roads. And I was about seven miles closer to, to my destination. I turned around. I said, I had enough of this. <laughs> I didn't want to get stuck in those ruts on that very remote uh dirt road management area actually it was a it's a management area up here so i turned around and ended up here and got my ipad connected because my cell phone doesn't charge i have to put my cell phone on one of those um flat chargers in order for it to charge so <sighs> it's been a life it's been a life and I'm sitting behind the camera today. Some of you may not know because if you don't follow my Facebook, um, you probably wouldn't realize. But uh, I have been posting on my Facebook. Um, I've been going through some chemotherapy treatment. It's a chemotherapy cream um, to use to wipe out the bad cells that could potentially become skin cancer. Uh, so my face right now I'm actually now on the downslide of that. It was a 30-day treatment of a cream they call it a fluorocil, which is also known as FU. So my posts have been FU day one, FU day five. <laughs> but um, it really brought out all these marks on my face, red spots on my face. I look like, my face looks like a pepperoni pizza right now. <laughs> it's horrible. But that means the cream's working and uh, hopefully i won't end up with skin cancer in the end and so it was a 30-day treatment of the cream and i just stopped it uh maybe two days ago so i'm uh, hopefully on the healing process of that now hopefully my my face will clear up but anyway that's part of why i'm also on this side of the camera because most of the time when i go live i like to be on the other side so that you at least can see who you're talking to. Eddie says an hour and a half wouldn't be so bad if I was going to stay like a day or two somewhere. Yeah, exactly. You know, if you think about it, it's really three hours round trip. So that's, that's quite a drive. Uh, Lamar says it's gotta be one of the best uh, places in the Carolinas, both South and North to fish. Interesting. Any Finn says, that's a beautiful spot. Thank you. Uh, fishing Pier, 24-hour sites. Nice. Okay. Big fish caught. 
Yeah, I guess, you know, if you can stay there and camp, that would be definitely worth a trip like that. I would do that. And handicap accessible. So probably a lot of people go there. It sounds like it to me, like a lot of people would end up going there. Um, I have the same phone issue. I have a tripod that charges wireless. Really? That's nice. That's what I need, a wireless charging tripod for sure. Because, yeah, I have to use the, well, it's not flat because it kind of does stand up my, my charger that I use for it. So, but yeah, I can't, I just can't go live because I can't plug into the port and all that. Uh, it's a pita, a pain in the ass, you know. Glad to hear the cream is working. Yeah, uh, my face is wrecked, but in the end, I, I guess it's worth it in the end. Woman Outdoors, hello, hello. Speaking of Facebook, and uh, LB has been um, posting on my, uh, or has posted on one of my Facebook uh, posts about, about the face cream I'm using, so I'm pretty sure. Uh, you will need shade at that spot. Guys bring their tents because of the sun. Oh, nice. Um, I haven't been out here. I haven't really been set up here that long, LB, to be. No, no bites yet. Um, I came out early. It was raining. And I was headed down into uh, a backcountry, very backcountry deep. You know, uh, what do I want to even say? It was just a long-ass ride. That's what it was. Going down into the spot that was in a management area but the road was a dirt road actually i want to say clay and because it had rained so much it was washed out in a lot of spots and uh the ruts were really deep and i did i kept driving down anyway <laughs> because i don't know if you know but i'm an explorer <laughs> so yeah i just kept going and going and then until finally I got to another one of those rutted out areas and the, and the trenches on each side were just so deep. And I'm like, nah, seven more miles to go. I'm good. I'm not doing any more of this. And so I turned around and I ended up here. Um, but it's all good. I stopped on my way out here to get some eel. I haven't used, I mean, I just haven't fished a lot lately. So, but what I have on right now is some pieces of live eel. Well, clearly it's not alive now. <laughs> Some chicken. But no, nothing nothing popping up yet. This is um, black water, too. So I think the eel works well in the black water. Uh, and honestly, you know, I may not know my water too well, but this looks like it would be great for flathead fishing. But I don't have any live bait. Hi, Lance. Hello, hello. Snow. Yeah, my sister has snow up north where I'm originally from, New Hampshire. And they just got a huge amount of snow. It's windy here today, so some of these lines, they look like the it starts to pull out and you think you got something on there, but... I do have bells on there. Got my bells on. Yeah, it's cold here too, LB. I mean, for being South Carolina, it's uh, I, I, it's weird though. Our temperatures, like we have days that are, you know, seventy. So I think we reached up to even seventy-five there a couple of days, and now today is just overcast and. Uh, I don't know. We might not even make it to 60 today. So not cold like in New England cold where it's 30 or so, but. Ah, the fish are still sleeping. You got those winter fish, right? You do. Do you do ice fishing? Interesting, you know, uh, 
Hey, J and J, hunting and stuff, J and J, hello. I haven't, you know, as you all know, I haven't really been live in a long time. I haven't even been on StreamYard and haven't been on YouTube in general. But what I'm noticing is in the comments, it actually gives a timestamp of when you guys comment. That's something new. I don't remember seeing that before. Oh, so yeah, you got, that's a bummer. So it's cold. You could go ice fishing, but no ice. It hasn't froze. Well, that's a conundrum. Oh, I like striper, striper fishing for sure. I accidentally caught a striper when I was down at the, uh, my friends, LG Bass and uh, it's all mine, Michelle, on their famous dock on Lake Gaston. And uh, had a fun time fishing one day with uh, Uncle Josh and One Ton Fishing Club. And caught a striper that day. Caught a few different species of fish that day, actually. Well, we definitely don't want to complain about mild winters, do we? See, I probably would be like you, LB, though. And if I was still in New Hampshire, um, I had a four-season tent. So not that I ever, I never really went in the snow where I dug out the snow around the tent and that sort of thing. But there were lots of people that did that. But I would set up when there's still snow on the ground. I would just do it in one of the campgrounds that let you do it off-season. So I'll have to look into that and see about that um, wireless uh, tripod charging because that sounds interesting. I'm going to have to definitely look that up. It seems nice now. I mean, the rain did stop, and that's what I was hopeful of. I, the weather did say that it was going to clear out. <laughs> Big sexy Mike. Hi, Big Mike. Hello, hello. So sorry to hear about your wife, even though I haven't really been... Oh, something water right there. Even though I haven't really been too much in the streams, I do... Uh, seem to keep up with all the goings on well i do see my line one of my lines moving there maybe something i don't know if a turtle's on it we'll see i'm bouncing or anything i just happen to see it moving yes i saw that she was um of course, following the, we were just talking about Facebook, but that's where I see it. Uh, so. quiet here 
which is nice. Probably the, the crappy weather helps to not have a lot of people down here. Martin, hello, hello. You gotta, well, well, you should, are we not friends, Snake River? Probably not, because I don't think I've seen any of your posts or anything. I just actually made my Facebook private. It was public. And then I just decided to try going private for a while again. And, uh, but I think the li link in my YouTube channel there, I believe there's a link to my Facebook in there. There's Stuart. Hello, hello. Yeah, I wish it was a little more nicer here, but then that would mean everybody probably would uh, be out here. And so I guess in this case, I'm kind of lucky I get it quiet. Oh, thank you, Stuart. I appreciate that. And thank you very much, Annie Finn. stock it out <laughs> yeah 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 mostly most of what I've been putting on there lately is just about my uh, precancerous face issues just all my lovely little photos that on my uh, Instagram too and so all my photos of my lovely uh, pepperoni looking face right now And I do notice, too, like with the phone issue, the way it is not being able to charge it from the port, it seems like ever since that issue happened, the phone just drains um, dead quickly. And it could just be my imagination, but that's what it seems like to me. I was like, it just... Because I'm not on my cell phone, um, shouldn't be draining right now. Oh, well, actually, yes, because I am uh, right now I'm running my hotspot to run the iPad, <laughs> to run the live stream. <laughs> yeah, that's where I'm at. No, uh, no bites yet. No. I haven't, I've been, really, I've only had bait on about as long as I've been live. Um, prior to getting here, I was down some back road trying to get to another uh, remote spot, but that just didn't pan out. But this probably is better because now I have signal, I'm in range. If something happens, somebody can get to me uh, a little bit easier down here than where I was. That was my biggest fear. I was going to slide off the road into a trench and that was going to be the end of it. <laughs> yep. Big Mike's big cats. Yes, I've I'm actually been seeing so many um, big fish on the um, Facebook and Instagram. And a couple I watched on the YouTube as well. It'd be pretty awesome to catch a monster out of here, but you never know, I guess. You just never know. They got to be out here, right? If there's one or two fish, there's got to be. <laughs> there's got to be some big ones too that are just. Uh, they might be out in the deeper water, so maybe I don't know. Not yet. 
I'm hopeful though. <laughs> yeah, too, I figured I was gonna go all the way out here to this area I'd never been to, not this spot, but the other one that I was going to stop and make sure I got an eel. So I did that. I got the live eel. And uh, I figured I better better have something more than just chicken. And since I haven't been uh, bait fishing or anything. But it's hard if you don't. I only had one day off and then I worked a couple. Now I've got today off. So it just makes it hard. I think you need a whole day to go bait fishing. And then, you know, prepare for the day that you're actually going to go catfishing, so. I've got that one pole to the left, the Mad Cat's pole to the left, and it's kind of down there in an area. Um, I've been here fishing before, and I actually did uh, have a, some good bites down there. I don't know if I actually ended up reeling in anything, but I figured right along that bank line under those trees down that area, there's got to be something. Donald Ware, hello, hello, damn river boys. Hey, what's going on? Uh, thank you. I was just talking about my, my recent looks. I do not uh, look too pretty right now with that. Chemotherapy cream I'm, I've been using is just wrecking my face. I'm done with it now, so hopefully everything will heal up. But yeah, I pretty much look like I got pepperoni all over my face or something. Martin, how was your trip here to the grand old USA? I'm glad you get to spend some time with Tom and Michelle. I saw some photos. Yeah, the one in the million fish, I saw that too, an albino. That's awesome. I mean, our fish here, sometimes they, the blue is so, so light. Not albino, though. There's Dale. He is the reason I ended up way down in the freaking back 40 of the freaking South Carolina country, I'll tell you. But I made it. I survived. I was cussing him out the whole time. Like, that's the last time I take him up on a spot to go fishing. But <laughs> he did say remote. And I would guess probably the better time to go would be if it hasn't, you know, if it hadn't rained. I think the reason that it was just so bad was, oh, there's a good, something just popped up over there. I just saw that huge ring. Come on, man. Take it, take it, take it. But if it if it wasn't for the rain, I think it would have been okay if the road the dirt road was dry. Uh, and there were actually there was some traffic. There was like I passed th maybe three vehicles. And one of them I was shocked that they were going forward because I had turned around. I I have four wheel drive, but uh, almost looks like my line's going slack a little bit there. I don't know. Watching my purple rod to the left. Because that's where that pool pool of water just happened. Yeah, it's going back out again. Ah, hopefully it's not a turtle. Oh, no, there's a couple pools going on over there. There's another one down there. Come back. <laughs> Come back up this way. Hey, Billy. Cold Creek catfishing. Uh, Stu and I am catfishing. Whatever kind of catfish bites would be fantastic.
Thank you, Mike. It's good to be back out fishing. Absolutely. It's just really frustrating when I have to work really, really hard to find a place that I can actually go uh, and sit quietly because around here it's all it's all the boat docks and then you're in the way of all the boaters and it doesn't seem to matter when you go even on a day like today the boat docks probably full of traffic so um it just makes it it's very and then the spot that i used to fish is just overgrown i can't even fish off that bank anymore because there's actually trees there now it used to be full of all these bushes and whatnot but now they're actually trees so um this may not necessarily be a hot spot but it's a nice bank spot for sure it's pretty right here it's just that here in the summertime a lot of people come down here and actually have camps because people camp here with their campers or their tents and maybe i'll get lucky one never knows dave both are hello hello thank you cold creek i i don't know yeah it would be nice to even get a bite i don't even you know even if i didn't end up reeling one in it would be awesome just to get some action on the rods for a change i'm actually just gonna go Touch the reels a little bit, see if anything's happening. Let's make sure I'm not all... I don't want to be ganked up or anything. snagged up or something. Sound like those bells just rang as I walked away. <laughs> that's how i've been spending all of my time it's just camped out in my room and since i quit smoking over a year ago now but boy i put on the weight so sitting in my room turning on the tv not doing much of anything and just eating snacks isn't helping snacks <laughs> i like the snacks i do i do Yeah, I miss the, you know, going into a lot of the chats that I used to frequent all the time. And most of those people aren't really even live anymore, I don't think. But, boy, we used to have some laughs, and it was a good time. That was a nice way to spend some time. But, I don't know, now uh, my work schedule, and by the time I get home, and for whatever reason, I've just been so tired, too, so... I just haven't had the interest in getting on YouTube. The festive season is right. Well, the bells help me, that's for sure. My back is turned or I'm looking at the chat and I hear the bells. It helps me to pay attention a little bit. That wind is making it very cold. You know, it's one of those things, too, like, if you get to a spot and you just you don't catch anything at it, it makes it really hard to come back to it, but I figured I'd give it another shot. I mean, it's a river. There's fish in it. So, 
There's got to be a chance to catch something out of it. And Johanna, I kept going back to because I was catching fish there. I had some good times catching fish there. That's probably too true. Bleh. True damn river. Once their waters are warmed up and the fish start biting, everybody's going to be live. I think so, too, back, you know, obviously we had uh, COVID and everything and more people were out of work or, uh, and that's what attracted people more and more to doing live streams and whatnot because they had the time. But then people started to go back to work. Dale, you're home. It's early. What'd you do? Go home early today? <laughs> this actually wouldn't be a bad spot to put the kayak in. I know a lot of people do, but they seem to go in the other direction. I don't think I'd want to do it right now, though. It's pretty, pretty cold. Oh, I'm at your home. <laughs> Say. Yeah, and that would make sense getting down that road you sent me on. I mean, if I lived out here, I'd probably try it a time or two myself, but today wasn't a good day to be on that road. And hopefully, if that's where you plan on camping, you're picking a time when it's dry. Oh, yes, thank you. Hit the thumbs up. <laughs> Martin, I would love to be able to be there for that. I might have to make arrangements to do that. I want to go to one of the cat cons as well. And so talk, talk about doing that with Tom. But I don't know. Money, money, money. Money, money, money. Really got to focus on paying down my debt. And the closer I get to paying off my car, the closer I get to needing another one. Isn't that always the way? Be nice if it would warm up a hair or two. Yeah, Dale, I would say so. And that was my fear, too, because if it started downpouring, I was definitely going to get stuck in there. I probably wouldn't have made it back out. Uh, I'll believe you. I'm going to have to take your word that it's a beautiful spot down there. But I think that's where you want to park your truck somewhere and then four wheel it the, west, the rest of the way down there. Catcon was a blast. Yeah, Dale, I would have probably, you would have been, I don't know if I would have even had the signal to call you. <laughs> and how would you have gotten me out? That's what, that was like my biggest thing. I was going to be stuck in a rut. And then I don't even know what it would cost to get a tow truck out there. And if they would even be able to find me. But that was crazy. Creepy as shit going through those, the road, the dirt road that went through a graveyard like the graveyard was on both sides of the road and then you get to this area that's like all washed out and trenched out and you're like what in the hell 
and the GPS said I still had something like 13 miles to go or some crap. I'm like, oh my God, I'm never going to make it. All this just to go fishing. Yeah, you got to love the good old boys. So we used to have at home in New Hampshire, plenty of that. I don't know all those people over here, though, so I guess it's good to know you, Dale. <laughs> Get the trucks, the Jeeps, and the chains. Minnow dunkers, hello, hello. Not so pretty these days, but thank you. <laughs> so I'm sitting behind the camera. I was just talking about how I, I'm actually, uh, I'm actually more on the healing end of it now. But I was doing a chemotherapy cream that uh, has my face looking like I had the measles or something. But if it killed off all those bad cells that could potentially become cancerous, then it was worth it. I'm sure it'll clear up over time. So it's not so bad if the wind would calm down just a little bit. I don't think the sun's due to come out, but. How's that view of the rods? Is that looking all right? I got, I've got a hell of a um, <laughs> Mickey Mouse setup going because. I got my whole, you guys have seen my Laura the Explorer uh, umbrella that I use with the big stand. And um, I've actually strapped my iPad to the umbrella stand. I took the umbrella part off because it's windy. But yeah, it's a, quite the setup right now. And the iPad, I have to um, do a hotspot connection to my phone. My phone doesn't charge through the port, so this is where I'm having all this issue, and I have to go every roundabout way I can think of. <laughs> hey, whatever works. <laughs> Bring your bank manager. Oh my gosh, Dale, is that why it's called Laramore? What was the name of the road? Something Laramore. Maybe it's because of your family name on there. I did notice that. <laughs> Thank you, Martin. I appreciate that. Oh, the birds are chirping. This is, it is, it's a real pretty spot for sure because it's green down the river. Um, everything's looking pretty green now. Maybe I should try getting up and recasting. Yeah, this location here, you never know if a wild hog's going to come charging out of the woods at you or something. I remember uh, my very first time that I was headed this way when I first moved down here and everybody was trying to tell me how this is loaded with alligators, but I've been here a few times and haven't yet seen an alligator down here. I'm sure they are, but I wouldn't say they're necessarily sitting right here up against this bank. <laughs> yeah, Dale. 
Hey, Kelly Bullock. Hello, hello. Thank you for the coffee. Don Long. Yeah, so this is working out all right. I, you know, running the live stream on the iPad and then I'm just reading the chat on the phone, so. Well, on a good positive note here, though, you know, if those raw tips were bouncing and the bells were ringing, it would probably be turtle bites, so. Yeah, it's windy here today. It was raining uh, when I first came out this way. But the weather did say it was going to clear up, and so far it has, so. I think I am going to probably do a reel in and a recast. I shouldn't have to rebate. It's a nice thing about the eel, too, is it does stay on uh, for a while. wore my boots today because of the rain and being in the wet grass, but my boots aren't waterproof, so in a way, that was kind of silly. I think this has a stand. I don't know if you guys can actually hear me. I have my earpiece in thinking that you can. I could be talking and you could not, and you possibly don't even hear me. I don't even know. Try running that one down the side of the bank a little bit more. That other line I bet. Nope. Ah, maybe that's what I was seeing. A little twig was stuck up on there. That current is hum dinging. Woo!
Oh, settled in a hole. Uh oh. Oh. Oh, I was going to lose it. I think there's a log right there. I remember that from the last time I was out here. All right, we'll see if that makes a difference. Oh, I should get my glasses. Here comes the rain, oh no. <laughs> no, I don't want work calling on my day off. <laughs> oh no, it doesn't have anything. Okay. Uh, Stuart, the rods that I have today, um, I have two mad cats, and then on the right is a custom Muddy River rod. Hey, thanks, Dale, for putting out that. If you don't forget, if you don't already like, uh, subscribe and share. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Sound and pictures all good. So you guys could hear me when I was up there. That's good. That was the whole point of having this, uh, the Bluetooth. But I didn't know if it would connect to the iPad. But that's good. Because I was up there talking away. And I'm like, you know what? They might not even be able to hear me. All right. So I got, um, oh, the picture looks good on the phone. Um, yeah, I got it all casted back out. So. Hopefully, hopefully we'll see something happening. I got a couple of these uh, Halo, they're called the uh, battery backup things. Oh my gosh, they're really good. Oops, I just lost my... I have floats on. I actually, the reason I do... Kelly is because that's the way Tom set up my rods when I was last up there at the dock and uh, I just never um, took them off I haven't had I haven't like I said I really haven't been fishing too much I went a couple times just recently this is the first time I've been out probably in a year and um, other than fishing up there at the dock so 
I haven't fiddled with my rods too much. I haven't had to do anything. He, Tom actually um, re-spooled a couple of my rods as well. So he put the pink, um, I think it's Mad Cat's line actually. So he put the pink line on my Purple Muddy River rod and on my pink uh, and purple Mad Cats. And then I think we left it green on my uh, the purple and with the green handle Mad Cats there. But yeah, I left everything the way it was set up there. And here, most of the time, I'll just fish the bottom. Um, but I would have to cut everything off and re redo it. So I just thought maybe I'd float up a little bit. Hey, Alvin. Yeah, this is where I've, I've floated. I mean, I've uh, fished off the bottom here. Most of the time is how I fish, is fishing right off the bottom. So today, I'm going to try it with the floats. So I would have to, he's, right now we've got it, um, all my poles are set up with the, um, I guess I don't know what you want to call those sinkers that are like uh, bullet sinkers maybe, and slide sinkers, they slide up and down. And that's usually what happens is I come back home and then I have to re-rig everything. Uh, for the fishing around here. But I just didn't do that today. I wish you guys could really see how beautiful this is out here with the colors. I mean, everything is like that spring green color, if that makes e even any sense, but gorgeous. You can see some of the raindrops. It's picked up again a little bit. It's all right if it sprinkles. Downpour is what I don't want. Hey, Alvin. 22 fabulous people coming by to watch. Hopefully we can catch something. I definitely need a, a new phone, but that I feel like that's just about everything today or lately. It's like my car is old, needs to be replaced. <laughs> my phone is not necessarily old, but it's all kinds of jacked up. I think going forward, I'm going to have more of a uh, standard schedule, uh, regular schedule of having probably Mondays and Tuesdays off. So, um, um, my hope is that I'm going to be able to maybe go find some camping spots, camping locations that I can, like I did last year, I went to that Baker State Park. That was on quite a long ways out, but I enjoyed that a lot, and um, my friend Andrea, Andrea, Andriana and I actually did catch some fish. My June's all slack. You got nothing on you. So if I can get to a couple of, or find a couple of places that I can just camp for the two days off or something like that, it would be pretty nice. And camp and fish and relax. I 
everybody wants to replace me at work <laughs> that's not good a bank with grass instead of weeds and muddy is always nice yeah I like the bank better than being on a dock if I can help it so that's my trouble right now is trying to find more bank spaces but I've lived here three years now and I've only found a couple of spots I mean I suspect if I want to travel like today my trip to where I originally was going to go fishing was probably going to be about almost an hour and a half um, away from the house. So that's just quite a drive. So like I said, um, we were talking about it just a little while ago. You know, if you're going to take a big drive, if it's going to be two hours to get to a fishing hole, then, you know, it's only worth it if you're going to spend the night there. I think a lot of people, I've seen the pictures of people catching flatheads and stuff here, you know, that they're spending the night camping. The nice thing about this, though, it's got that nice big... Um, gravel lot so when i had the, the live eel i could just dump it out onto the gravel and make it less slimy god i hate those things <laughs> nasty Well, what the hell? I had nothing fantastic going on today. Uh, I mean, I've been doing a lot of the walking with the dog, but the lot I have actually haven't even done that too much uh, the last couple of weeks. But that's the other thing, you know. If I you plan to go fishing, and it's for the day. That's it. You're out here for the day. You're not doing anything else on your day off but fishing. <laughs> it doesn't sound like a bad thing, I guess. So it would be nice to have a fish on that line, though. I only have some local hiking trips that I've done, Alvin. Like, um, my friend and I had talked about getting back out there. We have done a full section of the Palmetto Trail and half, uh, and halfway in through a second section of the Palmetto Trail. So we'd like to finish that up. I think she said we had about... 17 miles to finish the second um the second uh i don't even know they have they they call them something and i can't even think what the heck the stages are but and then we have one area that would just be the next phase around closest to the house is actually um, going to be around lake marion so it's a little bit of a ride too but I just have to get back in touch with her and see when she wants to do it and when we can coordinate some time to get out there. Oh, last time I went, I broke my ankle again. <laughs> I broke my ankle mountain biking. Uh, and then I broke it. Um, thought I broke it again in there somewhere, but definitely on the trail. That wasn't a good time. I had that we had to hike out. It was dark. A hike out with my ankle all messed up like that. Boy, that thing turned black. It was nasty. But I didn't go to the doctors with it this time. So it was probably just a small hairline crack. You know, tough. We tough it out.
<laughs> I'm so ambitious. I still have my pee pajamas on. Oh, well, thank you, Alva. I'm glad you enjoyed the hiking stuff. I miss it up in New Hampshire, really. Um, but I'm not there. And if I was there, it would be snow hiking videos right now. Beautiful, though. Beautiful up there. I don't even know if I could do it anymore. Now I'm just fat and old. <laughs> and lazy. I'd be in my pajamas right now, too. Practically, I am, though. I'm in leggings. That's close enough. You know, when I could sit at uh, Yohanna, I would easily sit there for several hours because I knew, you know, if I was going to get on the fish, I could catch fish there. Here, I don't know. I don't know if I'd want to sit, you know, sit for four or five hours. So. I think that was excessive at the time. A couple hours is all right. I could do a couple hours. I just got to learn how to get a fish in that time slot. That's all. <laughs> But I feel like if you sat two or three hours, that's more than enough time. If you haven't gotten anything by then, I don't know. It always looks nicer downriver. It seems like no matter where I am, I'm always looking downriver. Like, I want to get over there. I want to be down there somewhere. But you need a boat. Oh, wow. Well, I'm glad somebody liked it, Alvin. I appreciate that a lot. Well, where I just was um, before coming to this spot, they actually, it's a management area, but, and I think by the graveyard, there was a historic sign there. And they have some trails, but whew, I don't know if I'd want to be out there. The hiking here is just different because to me, it's walking. Hiking in New Hampshire, you're climbing up the mountains like four or five thousand, six thousand feet up above sea level, you know, <laughs> and you're working those muscles. Here, it's you're just walking for 19 miles. But it's pretty, and I will say that the, some of that Palmetto Trail, I'm anxious to get a little further into it. And unfortunately, I don't know that I'll ever be able to finish it because it would take um, somebody that's willing to do the drive out there with you so that you can do the car spot. Confederate Graysdale, really? Yeah, I took a little video as I was driving through that because it was just kind of messed up. <laughs> It's like, what in the hell? Where the hell did Dale send me? Oh, my lordy. I work with Dale. And uh, so he was telling me about, <laughs> about this spot. And I, he, you know, I said, I've never, I could, you couldn't Google it. I don't, you know, it's got a landing and it's the name of a landing, but you couldn't Google it. And I'm like, where the hell is this place? Now I know why. But I do want to come back when it's dry and it's been, I think it would have to be dry for a while for that to dry out. But the ruts are deep, but it does look like they might grade that road. Yeah, that wind's messing me up. I keep, I see this mad cats to the left here. It just, I think it just happens to be in the current just right. Looks like it's bouncing. 
Yeah, that's kind of out like um, Bucksport Marina has a graveyard out there that's like that. And they're literally in the woods. Like these graves are under all these bushes and everything. It's crazy. I had wanted to stop at Duncan's. I don't know. I was feeling like having a bagel. And the line, both Duncan's that I went by was just crazy. So I ended up, I said, screw it. And I went to the McDonald's. <laughs> so at McDonald's, they have the uh, strawberry cream pies. Oh, my lordy. Of course, Stuart, you can ask me a question anytime. I'm paying attention. So while he's asking me the question, I'll tell you the story that I ended up with two of those strawberry cream pies and I have one. I ate one and I got one left. <laughs> I said, to hell with you, Dunkin' Donuts. Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> well, around here, everybody's so big on the damn Krispy Kreme, and I personally don't find Krispy Kreme all that exciting. I mean, when we're buying stuff for work or whatever, it's it seems to be Krispy Kreme because it's close and it's not that expensive. But but yeah, when you that's it. I just wanted a bagel. I figured I, you know yesterday I tried to get a onion bagel. We don't have onion bagels. You don't have onion bagels. Oh my God! Pickup truck is backed all the way into the river with no doesn't have a boat on it. Just backed all the way in. I don't know if Stuart is typing that question. I'm still waiting. Kind of sad this pickup truck doing that. He's got two little kids in the back of the bed, which is very dangerous. Um, back home in New Hampshire, a woman that I know very well, she used to work, or yeah, she probably still works for the police department. But her daughter was riding in the back of a pickup truck when she was really young. The babysitter was driving. All these kids were in the back of this truck, and there was an accident, and the truck rolled over. One of the young girls ended up dying, and uh, my friend's daughter, she ended up with some brain damage, and yeah, it was horrific. And so they actually passed a law in New Hampshire that you cannot ride around with kids in the back of the pickup truck like that anymore, and it was all because of that accident. <laughs> Stuart says, so what green screen is this? As It's the best one I have seen in ages. <laughs> I asked Bob from any fins the same question. <laughs> yeah. This is the best background I have for sure. Dale says common practice out here. Yeah, it's just a shame though because I see it all the time too when they're riding up and down the Ocean Boulevard and whatnot and they've got all these kids but they have these little kids in the back of this pickup truck and they're just doing donuts and driving all the way into the lake here and river here and crazy. 
Hey, Joe. A huge, uh, sorry, a huge hello back at you. Ah, thank you. I appreciate that. You miss seeing me. No luck. Usual live stream of Laura the Explorer with no fish in it. <laughs> Pontoon Jody Catfishing. It's the beautiful Laura. Nice to see you out there fishing. I'm at work, so I can listen, but not chat. So a big hello to all. Oh, thank you, Jody. I'm just doing my usual ramblings. Fishing with the eel on, I thought maybe in the black water it would work. Uh, initially where I was, I really didn't want to go find that spot that Dale was sending me to, but it was just, you definitely need to have a four wheeler to get down in there. The roads were really bad, really back country. The kind of roads we have up in New Hampshire, four wheeling roads for sure, or mudding. You would think mudding too. But I wasn't about to do that in my little Jeep. Or my little SUV, rather. It does, Dale. I just need a fish on the line. Just windy. This current is kind of moving, though. I swept all my lines to the left. <laughs> Jody, I'm not everyone. I'm someone, says Dan, Dan River Voice. I can't even talk today. Dan River Voice. <laughs> Say that three times fast. I think, too, it's like the fear hit me, Dale. When, like I said earlier, you know, I'm out there and it was still raining. And the roads was, you know, it was already washed out as it was and trenched out to the hill. And then I thought, what if it starts pouring? And, you know, I'm down here and it starts pouring and I'm not going to be able to get back out. I mean, this is just awesome. Even if I don't catch anything, this is, I'm sitting here eating my quarter pounder with cheese, chatting with you fabulous people, and just enjoying the hell out of this freaking spot right here. Just sitting here and it's beautiful. I love it. I love it. I think I need to win mega bucks so I can be on a boat and just live that live this life every day. Traffic sound, that's the only problem here is you can hear the traffic. Just like Johanna, though. I mean, there was a bridge right there, so you could always hear the traffic. fish sandwich well i do love my catfish that's one thing about living here we didn't have catfish up in new hampshire people up in new hampshire would go horn uh horn pout fishing which 
I guess it's a type of catfish. I used to think those little whiskers that they had would sting you. I never, they were just nuisance. I never was interested in horn, horn pounding. I certainly had never had any to eat. And when it came down here, um, I had tried the catfish for the first time in a restaurant and it was amazing. So I do enjoy that. And then with Andrian, my friend Andrian, who's the chef, uh, when she went to the camp camping with me at Baker's State Park there up on the Georgia border, and we actually, she cooked up one of the fish that we caught there. So we actually did eat the fresh fried, fresh and fried catfish right there. Yeah, fishy, fishy. That's right. Yeah, fishy, fishy. That wind is at my back. Or it's cold. I've been watching that one, that left rod. I think it's just the wind. Maybe the current. I've seen the line kind of, it did seem like it came in on the slack line for a little bit, but. I think it's deceiving. It's pretty windy. It is. It's a it's a real pretty spot for sure. So I say I think in the warmer weather, a lot of people camp here, and uh, they they go swimming right here. I don't get out this way too much, and in fact, the only reason I even came by this spot was because I was on my way to the spot that my friend Dale was sending me to, but I think there's a few uh, locations to fish in Georgetown too. It's just again, when you have to drive that far all the time just to go fishing, it takes, takes away the fun of it really. Um, I usually don't listen to music, Stuart. And if I'm out here by myself and I'm uh, not live streaming, I'm just quiet. I don't, uh, I like to listen to, well, usually I just like to listen to the nature of my surroundings. One, I really enjoy being at Bucksport Marina because you can just sit so quietly there. But they've just gotten busier and busier lately. And Bucksport Marina is on the Intracoastal Waterway, so you see a lot of big boats. A lot of big ships come through there.
Yeah, exactly. Damn river boys, I would say the same. If I knew I was going to be catching fish, it wouldn't be such a bad deal. But. And I'm, it's just too bad about the Yohanna because I would drive there. It was probably maybe 40 minutes. But, and I wouldn't, and I knew I could catch fish there. Not every time, but. I mean, I guess maybe the next best thing would be to just put gear in my kayak. And see if I can get around a couple of bends, you know, not going too far out with it, but. I swear to God, it sounds like we're going to war right now. It sounds like the the biggest plane or I don't even know. And now it's stopped. Oh, loud. Oh, it was a joke. Oh, catchy. <laughs> I get it. It took me a minute. <laughs> the catchy tune. Maybe that's what I need to start doing. Yep, the rain went away, but boy, the wind did pick up. Hey. Hello, how are you? Good, how are you? Good. Thank you, thank you. No. What kind of setup you got? I'm doing a live stream right now. Oh, cool. <laughs> so we got DNR, guys. Sorry, just bear with me. I love seeing you guys, though, every time. Do you need my license? Yes, ma'am. That'd be good. Perfect. I didn't think you were just coming to say hello. I was. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if I can find it that real quick. Cold. It is cold, but at least the rain stopped, which they did say it was going to, but the wind is just crazy. Let's see. Better than sitting inside. That's what I was just saying. I like the fishing rods too. Thank you very much. The one on the right is a custom made rod. Uh, somebody just totally did the whole thing for me. Beautiful. And then the other two are mad cats. Let me see. I did just snap a photo of it when I. We'll see if you can, you might have to zoom in and out of that. Annual freshwater fishing. You got it. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'll get out your way. All right. No All problem. Right. Thank you. I'm so happy to see you guys anyway. Yes, if you need some, I'll have some. All right. Thank you. Yeah, 300 pounds worth of fish would be a great day for sure. <laughs> Dale, <laughs> yeah, that's good. You know, like, I, I'm glad I tell them. I'm always happy to see them, DNR. You know, the only time you're not going to be happy to see DNR is if you're doing something wrong, right? You don't want to be caught. But they're out here doing their job and forcing the law, so... And it makes me feel better knowing that they're checking, because... I'm out here by myself, so. Yeah, exactly, Stuart. <laughs> yeah, he was, he was small talking, but I figured, yeah, he's probably here for my license. <laughs> that was nice. He complimented the fishing rods.
Well, he didn't ask me about my pistol either. I just realized my pistol was sitting right over here. Not that that matters. I'm legal with that too. I'm just one legal beagle over here. <clears throat> Maybe that'll bring me good luck and I'll get a bite. He was real friendly, though. Super friendly. I didn't get the hard card this time, Dale, so uh, I don't know if you can just, if you're, I didn't get a chance to look at the hard card to see if, um, if it had the expiration date of my last license on there or not, or if I could actually just reuse it. So I don't know if you have to really repurchase a hard card every year or not, but I didn't end up getting it. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it, he was standing right up over my, uh, I have a, a setup where I can charge my phone and everything, and I have my wagon set up, and it was sitting right there. Right handy it was. But again, you're not doing anything wrong. He's like, what do you got going on over here? <laughs> I got myself all set up. All sorts of set up over here. What you got there? He's looking in my stream. <laughs> That's a live stream. Thank you, Stuart. I appreciate that. I already I've been live for an hour and a half. Nothing. Nothing is even even tapping my stuff. Looks like I had thirty thumbs up already. Thank you guys. I appreciate that. Like I said, I haven't been live in, ah, I don't even know when the last time I was live. Hey, Eric B. Hello, hello. Oh, Dale. All right. Yeah. And it would have been nice, though, if you just get it one time and then it just is good, you know, they can just scan it or whatever and pull up your current license, but no. 
That's all right, though. He took the phone copy just fine. I happened to snap a picture of it, and so I had it in my photos. A lot of times, um, I don't even know. I think in New Hampshire you had to have, we call them fish and game in New Hampshire, but you had to have a, an actual physical copy on you. Unfortunately, Eric, it has not been um, very productive on this bank. Uh, it's cold. It's windy. It was raining. It's crappy. I am using a uh, fresh eel and um, chicken. I had some chicken. Some chicken. And I wasn't intending on going live. I thought I was going to be, because uh, I was actually in AnyFans live stream, popped in there for a moment, and I said actually in there I wasn't planning on going live. Uh, I thought I was going to be down in an area where I wouldn't even have the signal to go, but that didn't pan out because the roads were um, really washed out and full of trenches and whatnot, so I decided to bail out of that. I never made it to that that fishing spot, and I ended up coming here on the way back through. I figured I'd stop here, and because I had my iPad and everything else, I was like, "Oh, I'll try." So here we are. Double O seven zero fish, zero bites in seven hours. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I'd want to be out here for seven hours. I have I have done I think the longest I've ever been was six hours. I would have really liked to uh, have found that spot. My coworker Dale was sending me to though. Uh, it was definitely down there. It's in a management area, and it was like 14 miles of this dirt. It's not even dirt. It was clay road. And so where it had rained, it became all trenched out from the vehicles that were going through there. And uh, some of the side trenches were really deep, so I was really nervous about getting sucked into them as I was going through. But I kept trucking on, and I got within seven miles of where this location was supposed to be in. I decided to bail out. And then I just thought at that time, it's not worth it because if I did slide off the road and got stuck in here, I don't know what it would take to get somebody to come get me out, if I would even have signaled to get out. <laughs> There's a lot of variables there. Probably would have been different if I had, you know, a bunch of people with me or something. I probably would have kept going, but. Because I'm crazy like that. But Dale said it was remote. I, I'm, it was definitely remote. And when you went to go Google, it was a landing. It has a name. It's called Tanyard Landing. But um, in one direction, I went just up the road here and thought it was going to be the road to take me there directly, but they had, it was gated off. So you couldn't get through there. So then I had to go further down the road to find the next, the next uh, point of entry, which took me through a graveyard and everything. <laughs> and I was like, Oh, you know, now if you're in a boat and then it's like, a three minute boat ride from uh, one landing to another landing and that and this would have been right there perfectly in line with a couple of the landings you could have gotten there very quickly by boat but but that must be why it's not on the like if you go to google it, it must be why you can't find it it's just that it's really not accessible but there were people I'm driving down that road. I don't know what they are doing out there. It looked like there might have been some kind of lodge or something at some point. There was a sign. 
fishing time let's go yes let's go that's what i said on my facebook page let's go so far we haven't gone anywhere though it's windy it's cold the picture looks nice though i'm i'm guessing <laughs> the water probably looks real nice the trees are gorgeous all the different color greens the spring green a couple people have pulled in we just had dnr here that didn't hurt my feelings any to sh have them show up it was quite friendly complimented the rods Ah, thank you. 34, I'm assuming you mean thumbs up. I appreciate that, damn rivers. Do you feel like you're sitting right here? Well, if you were sitting right here, you probably would have eaten my strawberry cream pie from McDonald's already. And I would normally be in front of the camera. I like to usually do that, but um, because then I feel like you are seeing the person you're talking to. But as I was saying, my face right now is all kinds of jacked up from the chemotherapy cream I was using. So I don't want to give anybody a fright. I, ha I was posting it on my Facebook page, though. I was saying that earlier. I was kind of um, keeping everybody updated of my journey there. Oh, my gosh, you're so loud. By uh, being a natural redhead... It was bound to happen at some point in my life, so. Goober time. Hello, hello. It's so nice to have everybody popping in and saying hello. I haven't, haven't uh, seen anybody in a long time. I haven't really been on for quite some time, so. Well, I, uh, I had planned on going into a whole different spot. As I was talking about, I couldn't get down there. The road was just too, um, too trenchy, too trenched out, too uh, muddy, wet, over, over uh, washed out, I guess. But before I went there, I figured I was definitely going to the black water. And uh, I thought for sure that the eel would be the best thing to get. So I did pick up a live eel. And uh, so I have pieces of eel on two of those poles and some chicken that I had uh, from the last time I went out fishing. I had some chicken pieces. And I think I had some kind of fat, too. I don't know if it's a pork fat. I had some kind of fat, too, in the bag, but I can't remember what it was. But, but right now what's on there is the eel and the chicken. Maybe I should try the pork fat. Maybe that would work better. I better not say anything about the cream pie. Yeah. <laughs> the family show. <laughs> Sorry, I can't control myself.
it's it's terrible too because like <clears throat> i've gained 20 some odd pounds i guess since i quit smoking so ideally that's part of why like i started walking with the dog my brother's dog it's not even my dog bella but i'll take her out and we'll do about four miles or so and then the alligators started to come out and there's some massive alligators alongside this trail that we go which i'm just concerned i don't you know it's one alligator something like six freaking feet long and uh that's the last thing i need is to be walking along with her you know and have her get snatched up by an alligator so i'm a little nervous about that although i guess i can avoid most of those spots it's just like a little u spot well i've gone fishing and stuff in there too but um so i don't know i just i haven't really gone with her uh for a while you guys see you see that pole moves all the time over there but it's the wind but instead <laughs> and on top of that where i'm not going out hiking really as much but then i'm buying the jelly beans and i don't know i got some uh cheez it's well they had a deal you know and you, you buy three boxes or four boxes or something for this special price so i'm like what the hell <laughs> oh my gosh so needless to say, it's not helping my weight loss journey any. But the jelly beans were damn good. I don't like those fancy jelly beans. I just like the plain old Brock's. I don't know. Maybe I should try the pork fat. What do you think? I think that's what I got. It looks like a piece of bacon fat. Maybe I should try that on um, the Muddy River Rod over here change it up I don't really honestly I'm not sure it would make a difference I'm just feeling like it's just not quite time for them to be biting yet or something. Although, again, I see everybody else's posts and videos of all these big fish they're catching. Yep, the big ones are biting. Yeah. And where? The Tennessee River, maybe. It's tough being a bank angler. For sure. Probably if I took the time to go get some actual um, cut bait, that would have been all right, too. Like, the first year, I did all kinds of bluegill fishing and stuff. Then I was doing some of the pier fishing, ocean fishing, trying to catch some of the ocean fish, but that just didn't work out too well either. nothing else you gotta get up and move around just to warm up a little bit oh 
Oh, yeah, maybe not. This fatty stuff is pretty. Oh, there. Looks like bacon, honestly. So it must be pork fat. Let's see what I did with my... It is pretty. It actually reminds me of a fly fishing spot that I would go to sometimes in uh, New Hampshire. Minus the rocks. There would be rocks out there, but... Yeah, I should probably... Retie this whole thing. Is this, no wonder this one's not getting anything. This float went way down. I think we're going to try re-rigging it. I'm actually amazed at myself that I had a setup already put together.
one thing about the eel is it stays on the hook. All right. I don't know. Does anybody ever have any luck with a, like a pork fat type of thing? Bacon. It's, this is freaking bacon. That's what I got. <laughs> I don't even know. Who fishes with bacon? Laura the Explorer. Hey, whatever, right? We'll try anything once. Everybody likes bacon. Let's go. All right. Hopefully it doesn't fly off. Woo. Let's see. There we go, we got the bacon on the Muddy River Run. Let's see what happens. Can't hurt. Fishing with Bacon is the name of the channel. Nice. Nice cast. Thank you. That river is really humming, and, and it just really did pull all my, pulls all my lines. That's why I cast way out at one angle, and it's floated all the way down the other way. Dale says his grandpa used to use fat back all the time. Nice. Let me scroll back. Yeah, live bluegill works. That's a good idea for uh, catching those um, platties, but I didn't go bluegill fishing. I'd make the bank, uh, the bank team. I don't know what we're talking about there. Yeah, it'd be nice if they were huddled up right here on this uh, this calm part of the river, but it's not working out for me. Yep, I took a fly fishing class uh, quite some years back, but I, I don't do a whole lot of it, and I don't actually own a fly fishing rod. I wouldn't do it now. <laughs> I wouldn't be in the. I wouldn't be standing out there in those waters now. Here, too many uh, water moccasins and alligators for my liking. Bacon is good bait.
Really? Pickles on the hook. Interesting. I don't even think, they, I don't even know if they stock fish around here. I could tell you in New Hampshire they stock fish, but I don't know if they do any stocking. Burr. Yeah, I uh, tried the fishing at night as well, but it's really sketchy in my area. Um, I was fishing. I'm closer down in the Myrtle Beach area, but... Um, and then I'd be out there at night and just it just is too sketchy, too dangerous. A lot, of, uh, a lot of sex trafficking happening here off our rivers, and you just never know what you're running into. And so that's what prompted me to get my um, concealed carry here. I had my concealed carry permit in New Hampshire, uh, but then no sooner did I get it, just kind of like here, because the law changed, and then you didn't need it anymore. And then here I got it, and then the same thing happened. The law changed here as well but um you could always carry regardless if you were out fishing and hunting so it didn't matter but i just i don't even like the idea that i have to do it it's just not normal for me and um i don't like to be in in situations i get trapped on one of the docks i was out there it was like four o'clock in the morning five o'clock in the morning and uh my gun was up in the car and this couple this girl was all sorts of jacked up on something and this guy, he was sober, but I don't know. They just really sketched me out, and I was trapped. I couldn't get off the dock where they were standing. And finally, thankfully, they just moved off and moved on. But So now I've learned, don't leave your gun up in the car. It doesn't do you any good. <laughs> it really doesn't. But, yeah, it's just being out here, It's uh, especially when DNR themselves tell you, you know, uh, be very careful out here. You should carry a gun out here. You should not go to this spot. Don't go to that spot. So it's just very hard fishing here. Um, it would be nice if I had somebody that I could go fishing with. Uh, and then I would be more inclined to do the night fishing if I wasn't by myself. But same is true with a lot of the spots. You know, I'm just going by myself. Um, it's just hard. Mostly why I turned to the uh, bass fishing. I went back into trying to do a lot of that. It's just a lot more places that you can go and go bass fishing. And um, certainly a lot easier. And you're always moving. You're always moving around. So catfishing like this, yeah, you, you're sitting around waiting. And I'm famous for saying that catfishing is boring. <laughs> I might have said that once, that catfishing is boring. Um, definitely sitting around and like this, I'm enjoying the, the live stream. And I like the surrounding. Um, and when it's nice out, you know, you're sitting here, it's, it's, it's okay. But it's cold today. Yeah, exactly. Being safe is definitely way more important. And I don't want to put myself in a circumstance where I have to shoot somebody either. But uh, it's not worth it. It just doesn't make it worth it for being out here and just trying to get some fishing in or some live streams in. None of that is worth it. Uh, and so as my channel grew, because uh, I was out fishing all the time and I was out on the bank all the time and it was a blast. I had a, a real good time. But I really never intended to 
um, monetize my channel because I just didn't have the content for it. Or I didn't feel I had the content for it. And sure enough, now I've lost my fishing spot that I was at all the time. So I definitely wouldn't have the content. And then I lost my taste for it. There's just the boaters are annoying. People are rude. Um, you know, it's just, it just made it really, really hard. So um, even though I my channel grew and I got over the thousand, I definitely um, never would have had the the hours to go and, and monetize, nor do I have the content to monetize. So now I like taking my dog, my brother's dog and doing the hikes and the walks. And um, it's just a lot easier <laughs> to do than uh, this damn fishing. Not to say I'll stop fishing because I have these beautiful rods and I have uh, beautiful friends, and then when I get up there to see Tom and Michelle on Lake Gaston, I could fish there. Uh, maybe fishing with Uncle Josh or the uh, one tonners and off Kerr, and it's just getting out there. It's a five hour ride from here. Yeah, but you're probably in a boat. That's why I probably wouldn't be so bored if I was in the boat either. And if you're on uh, that kind of water, you know, that you have a lot of catfish, we just do not. Our catfishing, I think, um, I think one of the reasons is that there was a lot of trout, what do they call them, trout lines. People all the time were dropping their lines here, but the fish would just die. There was an incident two years ago. Um, I saw all these dead fish up on the boat landing. It was awful. Dead catfish everywhere. So they probably had them laying on a line and never checked their line, and they just died. Um, so we're just not here in these waters, in the in the Waccamaw River, the PD River, the Great PD River. I just don't feel like there's a whole lot of catfish. You know, yes, you can catch them if you're out here and you have a boat or whatever, um, but it's not like being where you see on YouTube where everybody else is on the big rivers and that are just loaded with catfish, especially good big size ones. But it would be like me going to New Hampshire and, and putting a line in to catch catfish. We don't even have catfish. <laughs> I would be hard pressed, I guess. If I could get out in a boat on the lakes, you know, like Paul Meadowcat gets out there on, on some of the lakes and stuff. I think he goes into the river on a time or two. Uh, but Even that, the live streaming, you know, unless you're catching a fish every friggin' 10 minutes, it's not that exciting. So hopefully, <laughs> Hopefully you got a good host that just keeps talking and talking and making it interesting. Yep, I do like my bass fishing. Top water. But you know what? It's all right. I enjoy being out here. Um, I got the ride and checked out a new spot that I couldn't get to, but I might try that again another time when it's dry. I'm eating that cream pie. <laughs> Did 
Do they even have catfish up in the UK? Oh, <laughs> thank you, Stuart. That's what all my friends used to say. I'm like, Lori, you didn't even have to catch a bunch of fish. <laughs> Well, as much as I would like the sun, it's probably just as well, because I really shouldn't, I'm not supposed to be in the sun right now while I'm healing, I guess. But it would have been nicer if it was a little bit warmer. Now, if I had a bass boat, I could go live bass fishing on the boat. That would be freaking sweet. Probably would be hard to pay attention to chat, though. Wells catfish. Hmm. Scotland doesn't. Outdoors, Joe. Unfortunately, no luck. I even just put bacon on the hook. No luck. <laughs> I did actually change up the setup, too. I uh, took the float off one and went back to just laying it on the bottom. I'm probably going to pack it up soon. It's cold. But I am glad I got to be back out here and say hello to everybody and uh, got to do this live stream. Now I know I can do this setup like I have it right now with this uh, iPad, so you never know. I might come back into it. I just got to find myself a this. I like this spot. I do. But it will be busy in the summertime. And if it doesn't have a lot of um, fish bites, then there's no point in coming back out here. Oh, nice. Joe, I hope you do have a um, better luck. Yep, I'm back to work tomorrow, so... I happen to have Monday off and today off this week. And then I work all through the weekends. I don't ever have the weekends off, which isn't a bad thing. And you get used to that because... Now, see, I thought I just heard that bell jingle. It's not a bad thing to not have the weekends off because that's when it's busy everywhere, especially down here in the Myrtle Beach area. So it's nicer to have a day off during the week when it's not so busy was busy I guess it doesn't matter but it's all right I took advantage of the gloomy day anyway I had high hopes and now that song's gonna be <laughs> she's got high hopes she's got high hopes
I'm going to have to look up the Wells catfish and see what those look like. See, now, like last year, I should have actually been in my kayak and done some uh, bass fishing from my boat, but I'm, it's not set up. I don't have any uh, rails on there with the rod holders or anything like that. And I'm not a real fan of having snakes dropping out of the trees onto me either. So there's been some uh, deterrence for me here. Now, I've also understood that um, the alligators actually don't even go up as far up into North Carolina. So I thought that was interesting to find that out, that really they're more of a uh, marshland. You know, they're more down here where we have the marshes and whatnot, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. I'm rambling now. Ah, there you go, Martin. Is it like a pay lake? You know, I hear uh, so many people hating on the pay lakes and stuff, which I understand, but for some people, that's all they have. We had a... Back home, there was this fly fishing pond, um, and it was accessible by the hand... It had like a handicap ramp, and it literally was just a place to go. Um, it was small. It was just a small little pond anyway, but they stocked the crap out of that thing. And there were so many fish in there. But even then, you couldn't get them to bite because, I mean, they were probably eating all day. <laughs> so, But it was kind of crazy. It takes the fun out of it, though. This is more challenging. If you get a fish, you know, you're like, oh, my God. It was a big river. That one fish finally came by, and I caught it. You know, versus dropping your fishing line and hook down into a fish tank or something. Although I've thought about doing that at Bass Pro Shop. They'd probably arrest you, you think? Three hundred pounds. Oh my gosh, I'll have to check that out. Yep, Martin, that's what I figure. I mean, it's true, though. There's places that you just can't... Fish in the dream. Hello, hello. There's just some places that you can't... Uh, you know, they just don't have anything other than that. Well, the bacon wasn't a hit either. I'm um, doing okay, George, I guess. I'm recovering right now with... Uh, I had some chemotherapy cream I was using for about 30 days on my face to treat some. Oh, that line's going slack. What's going on? That was the bacon. It was uh, treating some of the precancerous spots that I had. And so my face right now looks like I got the measles. Um, but I've, the cream, uh, the treatment is now over. So now it's just recovering from here. So I just got to stay out of the sun. It's all good, though. It's all good. Could be worse. And work is busy, so.
Yep, no worries. I mean, there was a probably not feeling a hundred percent either while I was doing the cream. I mean, it wasn't horrible, but just excessively tired. Like I just get home and I just want to veg out. And that was part of it too. I was on this mission to lose some of this weight, but even now I just want to go home, buy some jelly beans on the way home and <laughs> sit back and eat jelly beans and who knows? It's horrible. But you know, when you're single in life, that's it's no big deal. You can do those things. Well, this is the wind. The wind just is making it look like you got something going on over there. Well, I'm glad to hear that the earpiece did work out and that you guys could hear me when I was up there at the polls. Because I was up there talking away thinking, you know what, they're not even able to hear me up there. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate that, George. We're almost two and a half hours with not even a nibble, not nothing. But, you know, it's early in the season, so probably got to warm up a little bit. Yep, yeah, it's a real pretty spot. Just nothing's biting. Might be a good day for some hot cocoa. <laughs> I swear to God.
You know, and the worst part is getting all your gear together, and then you got to take all your gear and put it all away when you get home. That wind has really picked up. Yeah, that wind's just really whipping and making the rods look like they're moving. Mom's still doing good, George. Thank you for asking. It's true. It is beautiful just being out here. Stuart, the links, yes. Sorry, I was busy picking up while uh, all this was happening. I'm going to reel in these rods and get ready to pack up. Well, I already started packing up. Pack it up. So I might have to go get myself that hot chocolate. Glad I had my vest in the car. We'll leave that one for last since I just threw that one out not too long ago. This one's snagged up here. Hopefully not. Nope. Got it. Ah, oh, had it. Oh, dang it. Oh, got all hooked in. Oh, yay. Holy smokes. That thing got hooked up two or three times. I don't know how I recovered it. Oh, we got it. So don't mind my face as I get closer. <laughs> but this is a uh, muddy river rod, the purple one that I have. If you can see it, I don't even know. Oh. Did I say muddy river? I meant to say man cats. This is a man cats rod, not the muddy river rod. <laughs> I'm so confused. Holy smokes, that wind is just a freaking whipping. Chile! Oh, shiznit. I put that seat up. Shouldn't have done that. Yeah. 
Yeah, it'd be cold right now on the boat. It's cold on the damn bank. Couple snags. Yeah, and my, nothing even touched the bait. This is the uh, the other mad cats. And I go, whoop. I have no idea what you guys are seeing. I have the thing turned around the other way, so. All right, woo, we're down to the the bacon bait. Let's see what we got. A multiplier reel. Yeah, I don't know why I was saying muddy river, muddy river. My muddy river rod's still over there on the bank. <laughs> I was like, wait, did I just say that? <laughs> yep, we're going to go pull that last one, though. So thank you all for all that are still hanging in here with me. I appreciate you came by for sure. Like the wind is just crazy right here, whipping around, my hair's everywhere. Woo woo. I can't see. <laughs> my nose is dripping. Wild man, wild. We love it. We love it like that. The wilder that it that it gets, the better that it is. Something like that. Ooh, yeah, this one's on the bottom for sure. It's dragging. And this is the Muddy River one. This is my custom. This is his uh, flathead rod, but custom painted with the purple and the pink flames. Pretty badass, I'd say. That's all she wrote, guys. So thank you again very much for coming in and hanging out with me. And I'm uh, sorry we didn't catch any fish. Uh -huh, thanks, George. It was so nice to see you. Oh, good. Thank you, Joe. <laughs> All right, well, I'll see you all next time. I don't know when that'll be, but hopefully I'll start to get out here a little more often and 
Uh, maybe I can actually get on some fish here sometime this season. I'm not sure. So hopefully my face will heal up a little bit better too uh, quickly. I'm hoping quickly. <laughs> but in the meantime, I will catch you all down river. <laughs>